five, four, three, two, and one. Should I not look at the camera? Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <YouTube. laughs> We're here with Greg Garbowski. He's a bass player for the Jonas Brothers. You might know him, you might not know him, but uh, we thought we might give him a little interview or something. So. First question. Here we go. Take three. How did you get started up in the in music and with the Jonas Brothers? You know, Brad Pitt came to me and he's like, you are so talented and good looking, I'm going to teach you how to play the bass. So Brad would come over and, okay, no. <laughs> how did I get started playing bass? Um, I, my father's a drummer. My dad was a drummer. <laughs> started playing the drums and um, then when I was 13 I got a bass guitar for Christmas. And I honestly believe that playing the drums first helped out a lot as understanding the bass guitar because it's all about locking in with the drums. And uh, and uh, and then I just played in bands in high school, played in church quite a bit. And how did I start with the Jonas Brothers? Was that the, well, that's what led to it because I played bass in church, and the music pastor at my church is like went to college with the Jonas Brothers' father, and they had just gotten signed to Columbia, and they was like, we need someone who's like 18 to 22 who plays and so they've been auditioning people and I met with the Joe Bros and Nick was 12 when I met him and uh, and then we just kind of clicked and then a few days later I got a phone call but odd story a little bonus for you bonus dun 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 <laughs> I played a concert once with Nick when he was 11 and when I was 17 a senior in high school and it was for like some church, like regional thing where they put all musicians together, I guess. And Nick was doing this uh, children's choir thing. And I did one song with him. I don't think I met her. I think I met her father. But yeah, oddly enough, you know, writes my checks for me. Very okay, cool. <laughs> when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a pizza delivery boy, believe it or not. Because of the Turtles, Ninja Turtles movie. Yes. Oh. Kino. Who's your favorite Ninja Turtle? Uh, Michelangelo, because he ate all the pizza for me. Yeah. <laughs> the one with the I, I don't know. Oh, I, I don't think I had a fave. Uh, what is your favorite Bible verse? Um, uh, well, there's a lot, but um, favorite Bible verse... Well, the one where it says um, that God will never leave you or forsake you because... It's, uh, that's a great promise. It's something that you can, like, you know, like feelings come and go. Like sometimes you're like, I feel like so close to God. And somebody's like, I don't feel, I feel depressed. It's like, but there's truth that doesn't change depending on how you feel. Who is your biggest musical influence? Um, Daniel Craig, I would say. Does he play anything? No. Oh, I'm pretty no. sure he's a James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Um, wow, <laughs> biggest musical influence, um, um, well, um, there's, you know, there's different ones, I guess. Like, I used to have, a f like, favorite bands growing up. I don't think I have a favorite band anymore. I'm just, like, like I just, there's too much good music, I think. Um, I guess, um, Radiohead is a big one, like, musically speaking. Um, I really like Burt Bacharach's songwriting. So I'm into, like, like, as far as melodies are concerned. Um, and producing, um... I don't. I, I was always a big fan of Steve Lillywhite, who I've met before, and it was super embarrassing. What did you do that made it embarrassing? I I was at a party that he was at, and uh, this was like four years ago, and um, like I knew someone who knew him, and he introduced me to him, and uh, it was just really awkward. He was coming down a set of stairs, I was walking up the stairs, and and he was just like. Steve, this is Greg. He's your biggest fan. And then I was just like, oh, hi. I wanted to be like somewhat professional. And then, and then my friend goes, like right in front of him, he goes, see, Greg, that wasn't so bad. And I was just like, mm. Mm. That's and it is now, yeah. That's real smooth. Yeah, but um, th there's a bunch. Um, but yeah, that's, as, as for bass playing, um, uh, I really like Pino Palladino. He's a place with like The Who and D'Angelo mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. John Mayer, but, like among a huge list, Santana, a ton of people. If you had to listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, I would have to say a little bit longer 
No. <laughs> no, I love. Look, I was just. Um, computer by Radiohead. Uh, that album changed, like, made me want to be a producer. That Aww. album. It's really, really. It, that album, like, I always say it, like, ruined music for me. Because I listened to it, and then anything else I listened to, like, just wasn't as good. And so I was like, well, I'm listening to this song, but it's not as good. So why, why not just listen to this? Anyway. Um, Abbey Road by the Beatles is incredible too. Like the whole second side of that album is really, really good. And um, again, we were talking, Lindsay, about Dave Matthews Band, Crash, produced by Steve Robley White. It's just like the playing on that album is like just incredible. Like the, all those dudes are so talented. So. Those would be my three. That doesn't answer the question, but three. It's close enough. That's good. Yeah. I guess people ask me like what kind of bands I'm listening to, um, but I haven't really been like listening to full albums recently as much as I've been listening to like s just songs. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm like getting into the songwriting thing now, but I'm a lot of like throwback jams. Um, like I was, I got the Burt Bacharach box set for Christmas, which is really he wrote so many songs you wouldn't even like believe. Like not just for him, he wrote for a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. um, so favorite song is always changing, but right now it was it'd be Burt Bacharach's "Something Big," which is such a good song. What well, we we did a lot of musical exploration nights on our tour bus, <laughs> where we just kind of turn out all the lights. Um, we everyone gets a chance to play a song on the iPod. The only rule is you have to play the entire song, no music ADD. So oh. you can't get to like two minutes in and be like, all right, oh, we'll change it, yeah. You gotta, so like choose wisely. Like if the song gets pretty boring, right. then, that, then you're not good at the game. So um, it's a great way to listen, like figure out new music with people and especially like playing with the horns because the horn players come from like a totally different, you know, like most of us are like rock guys or whatever, but you know, they have like all this like jazz stuff and mm -hmm. it's really cool. Like. You learn about so much stuff you wouldn't normally hear about. And we did it a lot in Europe because those drives were so long from country to country. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but we couldn't tweet it because it would have cost yeah. us like $500 because so <laughs> right. of the roaming. But uh, yeah, it's, I learn about a lot of good music just from other people like that. Yeah. And, uh, and the Jonas's have really, really good, like, kind of cutting edge musical tastes. I think they use the Genius Bar a lot mm -hmm. on iTunes, so they always, like, know about these bands months before they come out, so I get a lot of good stuff from them. Yeah.